So rant number three, where's the beef? Is anyone old enough to know where's the beef? It was the Wendy's commercial in the 80s. Cows are designed to eat grass. But what are 95% of the cows out there eating? Corn and grains, right? Like barley, oats, corn. Why are we feeding them that? It's cheaper. More efficient. They can fatten up the cows faster. Um, that way they can slaughter them sooner. They can keep them all confined into small areas. They don't have to have big real estate for the cows to walk around on. So it's, it's just terrible all around, really. And unfortunately, most of the beef that you buy out there is grain fed. Okay. Does anyone know about the cow digestive system? Have you heard anything about stomachs? I see you're sort of counting. Yeah, there's like three to seven stomachs. They're called ruminant animals. And what happens is they have the ability to eat grass. Grass has cellulose in it. We can't eat grass. We can't break the cellulose down. But ruminant animals can, and some other animals can too. Obviously, most herbivores like rabbits or deer or, you know, things like that can eat it. But what happens is when the cow eats grass, it goes into its stomach and then it goes to the other one and it sort of moves around. And there's like bacteria in there that helps ferment it and break it down. But what happens is when you feed them grains, it screws up their digestive system. And they can get sick because they're meant to be eating grass. So now you got a sick cow. What should you do? Give it antibiotics. So a lot of the cows are getting antibiotics as part of their feed. Not only that, let's fire them with some growth hormone too. And that way we can fatten them up quicker and it'll be more profitable. So we're not raising animals well at all. So what the beef that you should eat is grass fed, but it's very hard to find. You, it's almost impossible to find at the big grocery stores. You have to go to the independent butchers or go to an actual farm. Go right to the source where you see cows pastured, where they're out walking around in the sun. They also need to do vitamin D synthesis. So uh, meat that comes from cows that are pastured actually has higher levels of vitamin D. So the reason I gave you that little talk about cows is before I went in to get my knee surgery, I was thinking, what is something that I can eat that is going to be amazing right after I have surgery to help give me the fundamentals or the, the base to build cartilage naturally? And what I came up with was bone broth. Does anyone make bone broth here? Mm -hmm. uh, I find that culturally we see a difference too. It seems like people from other countries tend to do bone broth more than the North American population for some reason. It's like we've lost that uh, tradition or that ability. But think of like back in the day, say 200 years ago, it wasn't like you just went to the grocery store and there were tons of products that you could buy and you would be more um, inclusive with what you would eat. Let's say you had a cow, well you're going to use everything from that cow, right? You're not just going to throw away a bunch of it. You're going to use everything. So what the bone broth is, for those who don't know, is you take, what I did was I took um, grass-fed cows and I bought the bones basically like in their legs that have lots of cartilage on them and ligaments and then I took those bones I roasted them in the oven for 20 minutes on 400 I think it was just to cook them quick but then I put them in a crock pot filled it up with water 
put a little bit of apple cider vinegar in there, put in some leek, onion, carrot, celery, garlic, a couple other things, and then boiled it while well, slow cooked it. So not necessarily boiled, but slow cooked it for uh, 24 to 48 hours straight. Okay, so it's just cooking away there for a long time. And what it did was it helped to break down those components of cartilage and ligaments into the, the base molecules. And then once it was done, then I, I strained it. I sort of smushed all the vegetables together and I strained it all and cleaned out all the, took away the bones. Like the bones had dissolved a little bit, but not entirely. So that was liberating some of the minerals in the bones. I strained it and then I cooled it down and what ended up happening is I had the broth on the bottom and then this would be called like beef tallow or I guess lard. It's like the fat part. Um, and then I took that off and I used that for cooking. Whoops. <clears throat> so say for instance I wanted to fry some eggs then I would use a little bit of that. And then I actually drank this. That's coming up because I wrote an article about this on my website. If you want the recipe, you can find it there, hybridhealthandfitness.com. Beef bone broth will blow your brain. <laughs> I was playing on the alliteration there. But uh, this turned out to be the best thing I could have done for after my surgery. As I came home from surgery, can you just eat solids right away? No, you have to wait a little bit to get back to solids. So I was having this, the bone broth. I was just heating it up and it tastes like soup. So I would just drink it as like a soup. And it was very, it just felt so nourishing. I was getting everything that I needed to help me through you know, building new cartilage, repairing the area, all of that. So again, that was like myself asking the question, like, how can I build cartilage naturally? And then researching it, looking into it, what are some strategies? I found bone broth and it's amazing. I love it. Biohack number 10, lighten up. I talked a little bit about this with the, the um, natural lighting simulators. So I definitely utilize this in the winter. It helps get me through. I don't suffer from seasonal affective disorder, but maybe I would if I didn't try and get in the sun as much as I do. But the reverse effect. How many of you do this before you go to bed? You've got the bright laptop in your face, or you have the bright iPhone or Blackberry, Samsung, whatever you've got. It's really bright in your face right before you go to bed. Like, oh, I'm going to check my email right before I go to bed. <laughs> Super bright light. And then you're surprised, why can't I fall asleep? You can't fall asleep because you've got this super bright light, which is tricking your brain to thinking that it's daytime. And it's changing your hormonal profile. So let's back up for a sec. Going back to here, um, when you're sleeping, think of before electricity. Most people would probably go to bed a little bit after the sun went down. Right? There's no electricity. Maybe you've got torches and candles and things, but there's no artificial light that's going to keep you up really unless it's a full moon then maybe that might keep you up a little bit but most people are going to go to bed shortly after the sun goes down and here's what happens physiologically in your body when the sun goes down about half an hour after your pineal gland which is like next to your pituitary gland some people refer to it as the third eye it's deep in your brain there the pituitary glands or sorry, the um, pineal gland starts to release melatonin. And that melatonin is what makes you start to feel tired. And then it helps you go to sleep. And it's also 
related to other hormones like growth factor. So as you're sleeping, growth factor is released and that helps to repair tissues in your body. There's a benefit to this, of course, other than repairing tissue. Melatonin has also been shown to be anti-tumor. So if you have sort of tumor cells forming, but then you got some melatonin stimulation, then it's possible you could stamp out those tumor cells. So what happens if you're not sleeping well? You're not getting as much melatonin. You're not getting as much growth hormone. Have you noticed that when you don't sleep well, you're more likely to get sick, right? Your immune system isn't working as well. So what happens if you sit in front of a screen like this right before you go to bed? Your melatonin will not be released until a lot later now because you just tricked your brain. So now, let's say instead of, let's say you go to bed at 11 and you're staring at a computer, well maybe it takes until one before the melatonin starts to come out. But let's say you went to bed at 11 and you didn't stare at a really bright screen for a couple hours before you went to bed, then maybe the melatonin is released by 11.30 instead of one. Okay, so you can see how that could affect your body. So please don't do this right before you go to bed, or if you do, dim it. Does anyone do that? Good. So I always do that <clears throat> with my iPhone. Once, basically once the sun goes down, I'm dimming my iPhone all the way, because you don't need it so bright anymore. And I try, if we're watching TV right before bed, I dim the screen. You can do that. Because the TVs nowadays are so powerful and bright. If there's a, a white screen on the television, have you ever noticed this? You kind of feel like awake all of a sudden. You might be sort of drifting off, lying on the couch, and then a bright screen comes on the TV and you're kind of like, whoa, I'm awake now. Right? It's changing your physiology. So avoid that. If you want to sleep well, don't stare at a bright screen right before you go to bed. That also goes for your alarm clock. Some of your alarm clocks are very bright. So either put something over it or I actually had um, one alarm clock I had. I took some tint, you know, like to tint windows and I put that over the alarm clock. It wasn't so bright and that worked better. Some people have TVs in the room and you see like the cable box will have really bright like blue light or a red light on it. Even that can be enough to affect your hormones while you're sleeping. So you want to try and have pitch black room. Blackout blinds are good, especially if you have like street lights outside. You want to uh, try and have your room as black as possible and you will have a better hormonal response because of that. So morning light is good. As Soon as you wake up, try and get in some really bright light. But at night, don't get in bright light. It's easy to remember, right? <laughs>